<clears throat> Hi. We are so... Bleh, the worst start I've ever had to a video. Hey everybody, we're going to talk a little bit today about William Howard Taft, one of our presidents. He was the president of the United States from 1909 to 1913. And he replaced Teddy Roosevelt, and at the beginning of his presidency, there was a lot of excitement and anticipation for what was to come. However, over the course of Taft's presidency, that positivity began to wane a bit. In particular, with one of his closest supporters, previous President Teddy Roosevelt, who actually decided to run again and ended up splitting a lot of their voters, which allowed... Woodrow Wilson to become president, who would stay president until 1921. And what we know about Woodrow Wilson now is not exactly that great. In fact, not too long ago, Wilson High School here in the Portland area where I live was recently renamed. I personally like the idea that of cities renaming high schools after people that were actually of prominence to the local area. We don't need a high school in every city in America named after Thomas Jefferson. Anyway, during his time as president, William Howard Taft visited Portland two times, at least that I'm aware of. The first time he visited was in 1909. He hadn't been the president that long. People are still really excited about his presidency. He comes to Oregon. There's a lot of anticipation. He is warmly welcomed everywhere he goes. He comes to Portland in October. October 1st, he is staying at the Portland Hotel, and people know he's going to be leaving, and he's going to be going on a little bit of a motorcade through town, before ultimately ending up at the Armory, more towards the north end of downtown. So a crowd is gathered outside of, of the hotel. People want to see the president. This is back when, you know, the presidents were more out in the open, uh, more endangered, <laughs> potentially, and people got a lot more excited, and it, there was this great enthusiasm. People were waving their American flags and waving at the president. Now Nowadays, it's not really quite as, as positive, but uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Anyway, one particular guy, his name is Arthur Wright. He is visiting Portland all the way from Massachusetts. Don't know why he traveled that far, but he's apparently in town specifically because he wants to see Taft. I, I, I don't understand why. He lives in Washington, D.C. That's a lot closer to Massachusetts than Oregon, but for whatever reason, Lowell is in Portland, and he is really excited. He is gung-ho. He is like bouncing up and down. He is so excited to see the president that the other people around there that are also excited to see the president are, are looking at him. He's getting everybody's attention because he's maybe a little too enthusiastic, perhaps to the point of being unhinged. He's bothering people so much that some people start trying to get the attention of like police in the area and be like, hey, hey. Again, while everybody is already excited so police go over and start talking to this guy and he reveals to them that he's carrying a gun on him which is not exactly an oddity it's 1909 portland everybody freaking 10 year old kids were walking the streets with guns in that city at that time and he says yo god you know i just bought this gun for protection i i wasn't even thinking oh the president's here i'm standing here with a gun and that didn't even register in my mind i was just so super excited to come here and see the president of the united states so they let him go. And after his motorcade, Taft comes back to the, uh, more, again, more northern edge of downtown, and he's going to do this speech at the armory. Well, there's only so much room inside, so it's, it's a small crowd that's allowed to go in there. But a bunch of people there who, again, are so excited that the president's in town, they concoct this idea. Hey, let's get a big group of us together and we're just gonna storm the armory. It's, they seem to have this attitude of, hey, well, they can't stop all of us. And so this big crowd gets together and starts rushing towards the building, creates this massive chaotic mess. And in the process, unfortunately, they trampled to death an elderly gentleman. So, William Howard Taft's first visit to Portland was met with much positivity, but it wasn't perfect. For a moment, people thought his life was endangered, and then by the end of the night, other people's lives were in danger. So fast forward to 1911, and again, by this time, Taft is not quite as popular as he was before. Start of October, he comes to Oregon, and he's being much more coolly received. He arrives in Portland October 11th, and he does a little motorcade through town. Uh, people aren't exactly as excited that he's there. So there, there, there's a little bit of tension. There's like, you know, some people are actually like pissed. So uh, is, there, is there reason to be maybe a little bit concerned? 
Maybe. And by the early evening, as he did in his first visit to Portland, Taft goes to the armory to give a, give a speech. I don't think anybody was trampled in that particular one, but then again, there were probably fewer people invested in him even being there. They arrive, he steps out of his vehicle. He has a mix of other people in his vehicle, one of which, strangely enough, is the postal inspector, a guy named Edward C. Clement. I don't know why he was in the car with him, but he was. They get out of the car and they venture into the armory. But what they don't know is that an officer, an officer by the name of Anderson, you know, he's, an, he's one of many officers in the area. The president's right here. And he looks down at the ground and what does he see sitting in a little kind of ditch, so to speak, just a few feet from the very door that William Howard Taft just walked through, there's a handgun just sitting there. So Anderson, being stealthy, slides over, not trying to attract any attention, manages to pick up the gun and stash it away. He doesn't want to incite any panic. Why is there a gun right next to this building? Fully loaded, by the way. But is there a reason to panic? Why is there a gun sitting here right by the building? Is, is something underway? Is there an assassination attempt underway? People were genuinely, when this gun was found and Anderson finally reported it to his superiors and information gets around it, eventually it makes the papers, people were genuinely concerned. Why is this gun sitting there? Was, was this, was it planted there? That seemed to be the logical explanation that this gun was planted there for someone else to come along and pick it up. Were they going to come over, snatch it up and wait outside for Taft to leave and seize an opportunity? But beyond that, the gun was up against a wall and arguably secluded to a degree, but it was still there to be found. It seemed like kind of a stupid place to stash a gun and then come back later, especially with so many uh, members of law enforcement in the area. But people are genuinely scared. And when the gun is taken to all the officers in the area, and it's even checked against Secret Service personnel that were there, and nobody recognized it as their gun. So it was quickly dismissed in that moment that this gun belonged to somebody that was there specifically to assist the president. So that adds to the fear and concern, and for many, many hours, up to about a day, there was genuine fear that an assassination attempt may have been underway against President William Howard Taft right there in downtown Portland. And while it's only a rumor uh, that's never been substantiated, there were claims that while Teddy Roosevelt, his predecessor, was president, there was a secret organization, a group of anarchists, if you will, that met up at the White Eagle Saloon, which is now a uh, still a prominent place to go and visit in the Albina area of Portland. There were, again, unsubstantiated claims that a this kind of secretive anarchist organization would meet there and that they were planning out an assassination attempt of Teddy Roosevelt. That obviously never took effect and again it's, ne it's never been valid verified that that happened and there were assassination attempts against Teddy Roosevelt. So people are freaking out a little bit. Locals are scared. They don't want this to happen in their city even if they maybe don't like President Taft as much as they did two years ago. But they need to find out who whose gun this is. Because whoever it is, if they do mean to bring harm to the president, just because their gun is now in the possession of law enforcement doesn't mean they won't seek out another method to use to take the president out. And then things get a little anticlimactic, but funny. So the gun is being shown around. Please, does anybody recognize this gun? We need to find out who put this freaking gun here. And a couple people see the gun, and while I don't know how they would, maybe it had a particular look to it, while I don't know how they would specifically know that this was a particular gun that belonged to this particular person, a couple of friends of Postal Inspector Clement, who again, for whatever reason, was riding in the same car with President Taft during that motorcade, ending at the armory, they said it was Postal Inspector Clement's gun, and that was brought to Clement's attention and he had the gun shown to him and realized, oh shit, I don't have my gun. Yeah, that was his gun. All this time, those hours of fear and panic that an assassination effort may have been underway. And it was just a somewhat clumsy postal inspector. What happened was he was he was on the running board, or the side running board on the side of the car during the motorcade. And when they got to the armory, he hopped down and his gun fell out. 
Uh, I wonder if there was a bunch of applause for the president's arrival. There had to be a lot of noise because how would you not hear a gun falling out of your holster and going click, click, bang on the ground and bouncing up against the armory? How did nobody hear that? I'm kind of surprised nobody saw it. But then again, there may have been a lot of noise, joyous onlookers, and a lot of people's eyes may have been fixated specifically on President Taft. And that's how nobody saw this gun right there in front of everybody just fall out of the guy's holster and bounce against the ground and sit there. And it instigated this citywide panic that could have expanded to a national panic. People across the country could have been scared shitless that the president's life may have been in danger. And it was just one clumsy postal inspector. So no harm befell President Taft there in Portland back in the fall of 1911. He again was defeated in the next presidential election and spent uh, his final years primarily as the Chief Justice of the United States, passing away in 1930. I, I remember finding this story and I found the first article about this hidden gun and I thought it was gonna be such an intriguing story of mystery and there was gonna be some secretive underground assassination crew that had it out for President Taft. Yeah, no, that, that, that didn't happen.